what is real? How do you define real? If you are talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain. Morpheus asked the question that's at the heart of today's talk, what is real? Then answered his own question with, real is simply electrical signals interpreted by the brain. He made two critical points with that sentence. The one most people pick up on is that we, our conscious minds, never actually interact with the real world. Instead, we interact with signals from sensors in our eyes, in our ears, in our skin, on our tongue, in our nose, in our balance organs, and throughout our body. We only know what those sensors detect, interpret, and signal to the brain. And that's actually a very small subset of the real world. Consider vision. We can't see infrared or ultraviolet. We only have three color sensors. We only see about a two-degree circle in high resolution. We have a blind spot in each eye. We can only see a fraction of the full 360 degrees around us in every direction at one time. We have no blue photoreceptors in the center of our vision and a large blind spot straight ahead at night. And everything but the plane we're focusing on is blurry. Rich as it seems to be, our visual data is actually astonishingly sparse. But even if we were able to accurately record the magnitude and direction of every photon that reached our eyes, we'd still have far too little data to be able to reconstruct the world accurately. For example, <laughs> I'm pretty sure most of you have seen the dress. Is this a blue and black dress in white, yellow light, or a white and gold dress in blue light? Given the photons reaching your eyes, it's an unsolvable problem. No passive sensor is capable of resolving that ambiguity. In order to form a coherent model of the world, our perceptual system has to make assumptions and send its best guess to the conscious mind. And this particular picture is so ambiguous that some people see it one way and some the other. It's noteworthy how deeply certain people are about whichever guess their perceptual system makes. They just know they're right. And here we come to the second and less noted part of Morpheus's definition of reality. Real is just electrical signals interpreted by the brain. The way the brain compensates for the limited data it receives is by maintaining a model of the real world that it constantly updates as new data comes in. And it is that model, not the real world, that you actually experience and trust implicitly. At the core of the reality that each and every one of us experiences lies the fact that we're inference machines, not objective observers. By which I mean that there is, presumably, a real world out there. And your brain is taking the very limited signals coming from your sensors and trying to infer what the state of that real world is based on its internal model. It's one thing to listen to words about how we infer reality, but it's another matter to actually experience it. Where better to start than by choosing between a red pill and a blue pill? Unlike Morpheus, I'm not offering you a choice today. No matter which color you pick, we're all headed down the rabbit hole together. So pick a pill and keep your eyes on it. Got it? Let's mask off everything else. Interesting. You were pretty sure that out there in the real world, one pill was red and one was blue. But they're exactly the same shade of gray. The colors you saw were entirely constructed by your perceptual system and existed nowhere else. In fact, let's look at the original slide again. What color are the pills now? It doesn't even make any difference that you know they're both gray. You still see red and blue. <laughs> so what does that say about how well your perceptions correspond to the real world? Welcome to the rabbit hole. Take a good look at the blue tiles on top of the left cube. OK, now take a good look at the yellow tiles on top of the right cube. You think those are colors you're seeing now? Let's mask off everything but those particular tiles. They're all exactly the same shade of gray. This is similar to the pill illusion we just saw, but it's clearer here what's happening. See the white tile under the desk and the black tiles just outside the desk? Again, let's mask off everything else. 
And again, they're both exactly the same shade of gray. But if one of them is, that, is in shadow and is that shade of gray, it must be white. And if another one is in bright light and is that shade of gray, it must be black. Your visual system does the inference for you automatically, and what you see is white and black rather than gray. Take a moment and figure out which of the two tabletops in blue is wider as measured in 2D and which is longer, assuming you rotated them to line up. Ready? They're exactly the same size. Fixate on the yellow dot and observe which way the black and white dots are rotating around it. Next, look at the blue dot. And while continuing to look at the blue dot, see out of the corner of your eye which way the black and white dots are going around the yellow dot now. Move your eyes back and forth, and you'll see the rotational directions change, even though they're not actually changing. If that doesn't work for you, look at either dot, then move your eyes up until you see the direction change. The next example also makes a wrong assumption, but doesn't wind up with an impossible solution, just an incorrect one. OK, that's just weird. Here's what's actually happening. Real objects, especially faces, tend to be convex. So your visual system assumes convexity in the absence of cues to the contrary. The only way to make that assumption work in this case is for the head to be moving in very odd ways. So that's exactly what you see. As the oracle might say, here's what's really going to bake your noodle later on. Now that you know what's happening, try to see the dragon as it really is. I bet you can't do it. A little bit of conscious knowledge isn't going to undo millions of years of evolution in a lifetime of looking at faces. There are many other visual illusions, as well as all sorts of audio, touch, smell, taste, motion, orientation, and balance illusions. These tell us a great deal about our perceptual system, but our model of the world is constructed out of many inputs across all our senses, so multi-sense illusions are even more revealing about the inferential nature of reality. We only have time to look at one of these, the McGurk effect, but it's one of the best demonstrations I've seen of how we construct reality. Bar, 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 bar. Obviously, she's saying bar, bar, bar. Now let's watch a slightly different video. Bar, 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 bar. Here we can clearly hear her saying far, far, far. Except that she isn't. The video shows her saying far, but the audio track is still of her saying bar exactly as she did in the first video. The visual input overrode the audio. To make it crystal clear what's going on, let's look at this one more time. Once again, we'll have a soundtrack that says bar, but this time we'll have a split screen with a face saying far on one side and a face saying bar on the other. As this plays, move your eyes from one side to the other and observe how what you hear changes. Bar, 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 bar. The McGurk effect is an emphatic answer to the question, what is real? What you hear depends on what you're looking at, not just at the sounds hitting your eardrums. You aren't a microphone. You're an inference machine that integrates all available evidence to construct the most likely model of the world. In short, reality is what our brain reconstructs it to be, based on our model of the world and the sparse data coming in from our senses. I think it's fair to say that our experience of the world is an illusion, one that evolution has honed to be highly functional in terms of survival and reproduction. Since the primary objective of the perceptual system as it evolved was to stay alive, 
It operates rapidly and automatically. As the McGurk effect demonstrates, given a particular set of inputs, we have very little conscious choice about the reality we'll experience. That's why the rare cases where you actually can choose the experience stand out, like this Necker cube, where you can flip between looking at a cube from above and from below. And what we've just learned is that an experience is real to the extent it convinces your perceptual system and brain, because experiences are nothing more or less than whatever your mind infers from the data it receives. Thank <laughs> you.